So eight things that will change your life for the better. Thing number one, ditch your loser friends. When I say ditch your loser friends, I mean, if your friends are losers and there is no hope in them becoming better human beings, they have no desire to elevate their lives, they have no desire to connect to consciousness, they have no desire to have greater ambitions, you've tried to help them out, it is time to ditch them. If your loser friends don't wanna level up, if they're not interested in becoming higher level, if they are not interested in evolving, if they are not interested in, in the aspirations that you have and the goals and life mission that you have, and you realize that they are low tone, low energy, they're holding you down, they're limiting your growth, and you tried to help them, it is time to ditch them. Simple as that. Thing number two, raise your standards. One of the most damaging things that any human can do is set low standards and then achieve those standards right? You can't set average or mediocre as a standard because everyone else around you is blue collar and therefore you're going to be blue collar and then go, yay, I became blue collar. Like if you have ambitions of being white collar or you have ambitions of being a baller, you have ambitions of being whatever the fuck you want to be, go for that and surround yourself with people who are that and raise your standards to really high standards. I would rather you set your sights, not on the moon, but on the stars, because in the process of shooting for the stars, you will hit the moon guaranteed. But in the process, process of shooting for the moon, you might completely miss it and hit nothing, right? So the most damaging thing you can do in life is to set low standards and then to achieve those low standards. Set yourself some high standards, like raise your expectations. Don't just go, I'm only going to, I'm going to make enough money where I'm set. Wow, really? That's a really selfish statement. I'm going to make enough money where I'm set. What about if your parents get sick? What about if you're kids want to go to college? What about if you want to help your family out with their bills? What about if you want to donate more to your church? What about if your church caught on fire and burnt down and you want to help them rebuild it? You can't. You only made enough money for you to be set, you selfish fuck, right? But if you set higher standards, then guess what happens? Your cuppeth overfloweth, as says the Jesus. I don't know if that was Jesus' statement or not. But when your cup overflows because you set high standards and you achieve those high standards, and guess what? You can do more. You can be more. You can help more. And isn't that really the meaning of life to be in service of others? It absolutely is. So moving forward, set higher standards in your fitness, in your ability to orate, to speak, in your ability to, to communicate, in your ability to be decisive, in your ability to be a better husband, an ability to be a better father, better friend, better entrepreneur, better leader. Enough with setting low standards and hitting those standards and being proud of yourself. Like, fuck, man, let's get to it. Thing number three, stop making excuses. You can make a million excuses why you didn't work out this morning. You can make a million excuses why you missed your wife's birthday. You can miss, you can make a million excuses why you didn't get that raise, why you didn't take that, take that leap of faith. You can make a million excuses, but you know deep down inside and consciousness is eating away at you that it's an excuse, it's not a reason. It's an excuse. Stop making excuses. And when you stop making excuses, the only alternative is then results. I'm not saying that everything you do, you should be successful at. You will have periods of defeat, but that defeat will be temporary and not permanent because you will dust yourself off, get back up, and try again. But you first have to stop making excuses in order to achieve the higher level of life that you want. Thing number four, wake up earlier. Now, I'm going to get a little woo-woo with you guys here, but just bear with me for a moment. Consider waking up earlier because for most of you, if you wake up earlier, you will get more shit done. And if you get more shit done, you will have a greater sense of productivity. If you feel more productive, you will have built more confidence. When you build more confidence, you are willing to take on more risks. You are willing to do more things. And when you do more things, you achieve greater outcomes. And isn't that what we want in life? So then how do we wake up earlier? We do that by going to bed an hour or two earlier. Imagine this for a moment. You go to bed an hour or two earlier. You wake up an hour or two earlier. Now, here's the magical thing. This is why I said I don't want to get too woo, but I'm going to get there. When you wake up earlier and the rest of the world is sleeping, I believe there's only so much focus, good vibration available any given day. And you've heard the term early bird gets the worm. Well, if you and I got up at 5 a.m. and the rest of the world gets up at 6 or 7 a.m., you and I get to tap into that universal focus and energy and vibration more. And we get to drink out of that more and therefore have more productivity and move closer towards our goals then those people that wake up at 6 and 7 a.m., the masses, the unwashed masses that wake up later and therefore 
all of them have to tap into the universal energy and therefore there's not enough to go around. So I do believe there's something magical in terms of the quiet time, in terms of the focus, in terms of the energy available by waking up early. Thing number five, make more money. I can't beat this one to death enough. Make more money. And when you make more money, you can do a lot of good with it. If you don't make money and if you don't fix your relationship with money and if you think money is bad and money's not made for you and money is not available for you and your family, you come from a broke family and no one talked about money. Hey, I could relate, man. That was me. But I'm either going to use that as an excuse, right? And we talked about that. Number three, stop making excuses or I'm going to go, all right, I had a bad relationship with money. We didn't talk about money. We always ran out of money before we ran out of month. However, I'm going to change that narrative. I'm going to rewrite my story and I'm going to learn how money works and I'm going to respect money. I'm going to make more money. I'm not going to let it control me. I'm going to use it to multiply my wealth and to multiply the impact and influence I have on the world. I'm going to be generous with it. I'm going to be good with it. And I'm going to teach my kids how to steward money. I'm going to teach my kids how to grow wealth, have generational wealth so that I can finally break this curse of not understanding money. Someone has to be the one to break the cycle in your family. Why not you break the financial struggle cycle? And why not you be the example and the role model to everyone else in your family and your extended family as, hey, we can create wealth. We don't just have to be working for 50, 60, $70,000 a year. You can do more. Thing number six, exercise more. I'm here to tell you that most of us need to exercise more. Yes, you have to eat right as well. Be sure to do that, but exercise more. Not just for vanity reasons of like putting on muscle, get jacked, make money, I get it, right? And we had an episode, I think episode two or three was get jacked and make more money. It's a simple concept, but that concept leads to the highest level of personal development and self-growth. But where I'm saying exercise more, I'm here to tell you that one of the most underused forms of antidepressants is exercise. And one of the most overused forms is food and television. You don't have to always be depressed and anxious and use television and food to try and soothe and shield from your problems. You know, when you're stressed and depressed and anxious, you can go and go on a nice long run. You can go in the gym, start clanging and banging. And as you work out more, you release dopamines and endorphins and you create bilateral stimulation where you get your left side of the brain and the right side of the brain to work together to solve your problems. See, exercising more is more than just building your health and your body. It is literally helping you psychologically get over your anxiety, your depression, your overwhelm. Think about the level of consistency and focus it takes to go to the gym on a consistent basis or to go out there and to run or to go and do calisthenics in your garage, whatever it is, exercise more to a point where you go to sleep tired. I work out twice a day on purpose, once in the morning, once in the evening. The evening one, I work out with my son because it's a time for us to bond and connect and, 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 and two, two, two men doing, doing men shit right? Huffing and puffing and grunting and slamming weights around. It's fun, man. It's fun. But more than that, I get so exhausted from the workout that I go to sleep tired and my brain is not swirling around the day's stress and overwhelm. Look, man, I run several big companies. I have a bunch of employees. I have hundreds of franchisees worldwide. I have big responsibilities. Make no mistake about it. If I allow myself, I can go down that rabbit hole of depression and anxiety and overwhelm very easily. However, I also know that exercise is not just good for my body. It is good for my mind. And I do it twice a day because I release the happy hormones, the endorphins, the dopamines. And more than that, I get the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain to work together to solve my problems problems. And even more than that, I go to sleep tired. And when you're tired and you go to sleep, you stay asleep and you get a good night's sleep. Number seven, judge less. Judge less. Man, I got to tell you, as I get older and older and older, I realize live and let live. Like, I don't give a shit what you do in your life. I don't give a shit how you live. I don't give a shit if you're pro-abortion or anti-abortion or pro-life, whatever the fuck they call it. I don't care what flag you fly, if it's the gay flag, the, the, the straight flag, the multicolored trans bisexual flag. Here's what I do know. Don't judge me. and I'm not going to judge you. Don't project your way of life on me. I'm not going to project my way of life on you. I do have to say that the 1.0 version of me, my 20s, all I did was judge. And I found myself always pointing to others as the problem by judging others, never once pointing back to myself saying that I could have the solution. These days, I just choose not to judge people, live and let live. But at 48, I have a greater understanding of humanity and I understand that we all see life differently. Yes, we are on the same planet at the same time, but we are experiencing very different human experiences. 
based on your experiences as a child, based on what your parents and school teachers taught you, and based on my experiences as a child and what my parents and teachers taught me, based on our religions, based on our cultures, we are in the same place and time experiencing two very different lives. So who am I to judge you? And who are you to judge me or anyone else? Just think about that. And finally, number eight, be kind. Be kind. Man, we live in a world that is so divisive right now. And I do believe that the opposition has done a great job dividing people to the point where it's black versus white, cop haters versus cop lovers, mask, no mask, vax, no vax, pandemic was real, pandemic was made up, like Democrat versus Republican. You're, you're seeing so many ways of divisiveness. And I do believe that that is by design, that the opposition wants us divided because the more divided we are, then we cannot be united against the opposition if we are constantly divided against one another, right? Think about that. So be kind. Be kind to your fellow man. Be kind to you, to to the people that you come across. Shake hands. Make eye contact. Say hello to people. Say hello to strangers. Like, what's wrong with that? Just a smile. Because you don't know what that other person is going through. We don't know what another person's human condition is. Someone might have a grimace on their face, and they might be of different color, different ethnicity, different whatever. Or if it's my case, God's given me a fucking resting bitch face. I have this angry face that if I don't put myself in check, I have this mug on my face like I'm going to kill you. And if you see me, you might judge me on that and not be kind to me. But if you just maybe smiled, said hello, gave me a nod, you can break me out of that resting bitch face, right? Now I've become very self-aware and I don't carry that face anymore because I just walk around smiling with a, with a half cock smile on my face. Like I realize that is the best way to disarm people is to have this half cock smile on my face. But that said, man, be kind, crack a joke, shake hands, say what's up. For all you know, that person's about to get in their car and go to a place where they may make a bad decision about their next few moments. And you might be the person by saying hello, being kind, shaking a hand, complimenting them on their shoes or their clothes, you might be the person that just saved their life.